Hello everybody and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. Today I am joined with Coda. That's me. It sure is you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and today, like the the wheel has chosen for us, we shall be reading Ishimondo fan fiction. <laughs> now Let's fucking go. Finding one of these was so difficult. For some really? reason. I like a good one. <laughs> Okay, okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, gotta use my words carefully on that one, but... Yeah. I was like, I thought there was so much Ishimondo out there, but the word good yeah, was an important inclusion in this. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I had a bunch saved from my reading list, I'm like, oh, let me look through these, and they were like absolute garbage. I'm like, how the fuck yeah. did I look at this <laughs> and think this was so good? <laughs> I think the average like age for Danganronpa um, fan fiction writers is probably like fifteen. Okay, so we gotta trust a random fifteen-year-old to write some goddess shit. <laughs> yeah, and it's usually not. But we'll see what happens today. Yeah, we did find one that seemed pretty good. It probably give us some pretty good chuckles. It mm -hmm. is called "With a Little Help from Friends" an Ishimondo fan fiction. So we are going to dive into that. All right. So it, it's labeled as complete, and I wrote "complete" in the <laughs> description just in case you miss it. <laughs> <laughs> in which, uh, Taka and Mondo are such romantically inexperienced idiots that their friends are forced to intervent. Intervene contains disgusting amount of friendship, blush, and fluff. At least it's well, not labeled mature. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I can handle that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Mondo All right. Part 1. Let's go. Alright, who, who would like... Do oh, do I have a bottle I don't have a bottle cap. I have my oh. brush right here if we want to flip it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. Alright, What which side do you want to be? The bristles or the back side? I'll be, I'll be a, a bristle. Okay. Alright. Oh shit, it landed sideways. <laughs> 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 okay, let me try again. It's the bristles. <laughs> okay. Give me a second. I'm eating cereal. Okay. <laughs> well, wait, 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 what cereal are you eating, bro? Um, I just grabbed, like, a little, like, to-go cup of Frosted Flakes. Okay, that's a good choice. Yeah, they're about to say, like, freaking... The only other option was Captain Crunch, but I didn't want it to hurt my mouth. No, that's better than fucking, like, Fruity Pebbles. I fucking hate Fruity Pebbles. You hate Fruity, fruity, fruity Pebbles? Yeah, I don't like it. I'm, I'm sorry that you're missing out, bro. <laughs> I love that shit. I'm, I'm sorry I offended your first choice. My first choice is no. always Lucky Charms. <laughs> Okay, okay. Not yeah. bad, not bad. Uh, I don't really- I don't eat cereal enough to have a first choice, but, uh, I- I do enjoy Fruity Pebbles and Cocoa Pebbles and, uh, others. Damn, so I just insulted your first choice then. I'm so sorry, bro. <laughs> no, I- I hold no <laughs> ill will against you. I'm just sad that you cannot experience the- the joy that I hold for them. <laughs> I'll, maybe I can give it a. I, I don't think I've ever had it before, but like, really, the the, the one time I did was at my boy's house, and he had it for so mm -hmm. long that it expired, and it tastes like shit. So okay, that's was, probably the reason. Yeah, I was like, I don't want to trust like, because if I buy a whole box and I don't like it, then that, that whole mm -hmm. box is gonna be sitting in there, and yeah. I, and I feel like a waste for wasting a box of cereal. You can bring it to me. All right, no, that's fair. All right. <laughs> Just okay. roll up to work. I'm like, bro, I didn't like this. Here you go. Just throw fucking fruit bubbles at you. <laughs> just bring it to the <laughs> just, uh, oh, Drop God. off for a uh, coda. <laughs> I have an Uber Eats for a uh, coda for fruit pebbles. <laughs> an opened box. <laughs> Man, I would have to, like, get like a paid sticker to walk out of the store with that <laughs> you're right that's i can bring it in a food lion bag and then they'd be like oh you got it for food lion <laughs> okay yeah that's true yeah see smart ahead 
You you are smart. <laughs> I I try to be. I mean, I think you succeed. All right, I gotta get ad blocker because it's on my fucking computer. I thought I had it, but I guess not. Because Wattpad would right. be like, curl up with your next reading with no interruptions. And I'm like, go away. No, thanks. <laughs> Can't go. Literally, get out of here. God, the ads are so bad on, on mobile for Wattpad. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like there's this one site that I use to like make like 3D models of characters. Mm-hmm. And af- every single time I use it, Afterwards, when I'm scrolling Instagram, I'll get a bajillion ads for it. And I'm just like, I just used you! <laughs> you don't have to advertise to me. Stop marketing to me. You have already marketed to me enough. <laughs> exactly. I get it. <laughs> Alright, are, are you ready to to laugh, cry, and, and, <laughs> and read? Always. Alright. Mondo Owada was going insane. Me too, bro. (laughs) Some people might have said that he was already insane based on his reputation and his lifestyle, but they didn't know what went on inside his head. (laughs) There was a method to his brand of madness. There was an order, a way things were supposed to be done. The absolute agony of being in love with his best friend was not part of the plan, and the more he thought about it, the more he felt like throwing himself out the nearest window or taking a very long cold shower for the rest of eternity. At first, he tried to deny it. To deny it. He had tried to dismiss the fluttering in his chest and the flip-flopping his stomach and the blood that was constantly rushing to his face as symptoms of his intense friendship with his Kyodai. <laughs> God damn. Intense friendship. What the fuck does that mean? God. <laughs> Yeah, that's a little odd. He made excuses for his constant urge to hug him and put his arm around him, and he he rationalized away his daydreams about what it would be like to kiss him. You got it bad, bro. Yo, this is... This is so down bad right now. No, yeah, this is, like, terminal. (laughs) I love the beginning, too. Like, no one knows what's going inside his head. That mainly made me think of, like, Inside Out when they're... Oh, yeah. Do you remember the car- commercials for Inside Out when they're like, you ever look at someone and, and think, what is going on inside there? <laughs> yes, I the, miss those. I, I, immediate flashback as soon as they, they talked about what was going on in his head. It's yeah. Those stupid fucking commercials I saw everywhere <laughs> for the movie. And then it became what? a meme. <laughs> mm-hmm. Alright, let's see. I'll, okay, it's right here. Actually, that was where everything had ground to a halt, where he had been left with no choice but to accept his feelings that had evolved past what one would really call platonic. <laughs> <laughs> Strangely, he felt no, re- no mourning of his lost friendship. There was because he hasn't lost it. Hirotaka Ishimaru was still his best friend, the best anyone could ask for. It was just that he was more than that now, and Mondo feared that if he told the truth, if he admitted that things have gone so bad, he started imagining their future domestic life together and had already decided what kind of dog child they would adopt and what they would call it. He would drive Giyataka away. There was no doubt in his mind that the perfect was inexperienced when it came to love. For several weeks m- after Mondo's realization, things continued as normal. Him and his... What the... How did you pronounce this? Kodai? Uh, Kyodai. Kyodai. Still spend time, most of their days together, oftentimes in comfortable silence as they did with their respective tasks, and oftentimes laughing and talking about whatever came to mind. Mondo had even learned to appreciate Kiyotaka's regular scoldings, as he had realized it was only ever done out of concern for his well-being. Mono thought to himself that maybe things could stay this way, that he could swallow down his feelings and nothing could change, and that eventually his heart would learn to beat normally again. This was wishful thinking. <laughs> yeah, he's, um, he's pretty, down bad is an understatement. <laughs> like, this is, oh man. Yeah, <laughs> Bro, what? Like, Jesus. He's got I'm the gonna, love bug right now, dude. I'm gonna, like, put him in a mental hospital at this rate. <laughs> Man. 
<clears throat> Mondo began to notice more and more of Kiyotaka's adorable quirks. When had they become adorable instead of annoying? And every time he looked too long at his ruby eyes or his pursed lips or his slender hands, he felt the urge to make Kiyotaka his rise once more. He started making excuses for leaving their outings early, started dodging him in the halls and avoiding his gaze in class. Kiyotaka was dense when it came to these sort of things, and even he was beginning to notice. And finally he asked the question that shot through Mondo's heart like a bullet. They were walking to their next class, and Kiyotaka had caught up to Mondo without him noticing. Kyodai, do you not wish to be my friend anymore? You've been avoiding me. What have I done that has upset you? Bang, right through the heart. Mondo had half a mind to check himself into the infirmary. I, I know, that's what I've been saying. I feel like but you I'm should have done that before. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. It's a little late now. But instead he turned bright red and his voice rose in volume as it always did when he was nervous. No, no, that's not it at all. You got the wrong idea, Taka. I, I swear to God, some just... What was it exactly? What was he supposed to say? The biker risked a brief glance at Kiyotaka, who was looking up at him with those Hold on. with those red eyes as he stomped his foot in frustration. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> and just like that, Mondo took off running down the hall like a coward. Damn. His hypothetical tail tucked between his legs. He could feel Kiyotaka's eyes burning holes in his back. Why the fuck did you run away? Just tell him! <laughs> Dude... Man, for a tough biker leader, um, you're pretty much a coward. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. The image of this is so funny, by the way. <laughs> you, you imagine this happening? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it 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 became clear right then, right then and there that something had to be done. He couldn't keep going on like this, and no matter what course of action he took, it was it took it was possible that his kill. Kyodai would get hurt. It was better than to be honest, right? That's what Dia would say, right? Oh, Daya, Damn. I forgot don't, about Daya. <laughs> don't bring Daya into this. And that's what led him up to this to this po fuck, hold on. This was what led up to this the potential moment. <laughs> God <clears throat> not the not the Daya comment. <laughs> Okay. Mondo glanced at the clock and saw that the class period was nearing its end. This was a good window of time. It would mean that he wouldn't have to spend 30 minutes awkwardly waiting a response, but that there would be a time for a response. He had seated himself near the front that day and made sure his desk was positioned right next to Kiyotaka's. The pre prefect had been delighted to see him, of course, after his little running in the hall stunt from earlier, a stunt for which he was then reprimanded. Mondo glanced at Kiyotaka and saw that his gaze was fixed on the chalkboard in front. Mondo casually slid a folded piece of paper onto Kiyotaka's desk and withdrew his hand entirely before the other boy even had a chance to react. The method he'd, he'd chosen was perhaps the e cheesiest and least confrontational in the world, but it was the best he could manage without a personal pep rally. He'd gone way old school. The note simply read, Will you go out with me? Followed by a small heart. Underneath were two check boxes, one for yes and one for no. Oh, that is so goddamn cute. <laughs> you little sap. Should I- should, next time I ask to leave early for work, I should do that for Tandy. <laughs> and just be like, can I leave early with a heart? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's so fucking cute. <laughs> just like, pass it to her, she opens it, and it's like, do you like me? If so, can I go <laughs> home <horrible> early? <laughs> God. She was the minion's <laughs> surprise, Kiyotaka glared at him and then promptly crumbled the note and threw it back in Mondo. What the fuck, Kiyot? <laughs> god. Wow, that that was savage. What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. Mondo felt like his heart has been has been crumbled somehow. What the hell was that for? He hissed under his breath, wow. passing notes in classes against the rules. Oh my god, what a fucking stickler. <laughs> Dude. Kiyotaka responded. He said it like it was the most obvious thing in the world, as obvious, as oblivious as always. Mondo slammed his head against the desk, folding his... What the fuck? 
his as pompadour. Pom- yes, pompadour in the process. He did not notice Kiri Kirigiri's icy stare. Bro, he just fucked up his hairdo. <laughs> Man. I was just thinking about that when he when he said he slammed his head against the desk, and I'm like, doesn't he have that big ass piece of he hair? He sure does. The fucking cone. <laughs> oh, that is so fucking. Oh, Opens it, crumbles, and is like, there's no passing notes in this classroom. <laughs> like a fucking snark. <laughs> God. All right, chapter uh, chapter two, Mondo part two. A lot of okay. lot of part twos. Actually, there's a lot of yeah. parts in this. Yeah. yeah, I think it had eleven. But one of them looks like it might just be an announcement for the second book. So. Yeah. Maybe ten. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, who's starting this one? Uh, I I shall be brave. <laughs> okay. All right. Plan B had failed. Actually, it had bombed miserably and spectacularly. Maybe it was exaggerating, but that's how it felt. Mondo was now forced to resort to Plan B. What the fuck does that? <laughs> um. I'm scared of what like it's like a last resort thing. Yeah. Which was, unfortunately, very similar to Plan A. <laughs> what do you... Oh, is he gonna put it in the locker? <laughs> or, like, something oh, like that? Oh, maybe. Oh, that'd be cute. Alright, I'm for this plan. <laughs> He's silly. He's just a silly little guy right now. <laughs> That's it. That's all he is. After the failed attempt to pass Kiyotaka his note, Mondo and two other class... Mondo had two other classes to take, neither of which... The other boy was in, and thankfully so, as his presence would make him, made him insanely nervous. He'd spent most of the class periods impatiently tapping his feet, unable to think of anything but what he was planning to do. For a moment or two, he tried to keep up, come up with a better plan. But being no champion of romance, no such better idea came to mind. <laughs> he felt a yeah. moment of panic <laughs> during the last class when he encountered. When it occurred to him that he'd literally never gotten anyone to ask him, go out with him before, Aww. it had been girls, and he understood how. He... <sighs> before it had been girls, and he understood now that girls weren't exactly his cup of tea, and the point was all of his previous attempts had failed. This Aww. history of failure was scary now that he is actually interested in someone. Oh, that's scary. That's really sad. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. (laughs) (laughs) Now, though, all Mondo had to do was wait. Oh, sorry. As he opted for the written word to avoid the risk of yelling. He stood as inconspicuously as possible next to a row of lockers and leaned against a wall. He didn't want to give off the appearance that he was waiting for Hiyotaka, though. That was, of course, exactly what he's doing. Wadakun, what are you doing? A smooth voice interrupted his train of thought. And Mondo turned to see Kirigiri eyeing him with a blatant suspicion. She had appeared seemingly out of nowhere. He hadn't even heard her shoes. How does she always do that? I'm not doing anything, he managed when the shock passed. For a moment, the two only stared at one another, and Mondo had no idea what to say. He could feel her studying him like he was a textbook, probably looking for a tell that he was lying, and he was sure he had many. He was no master of subtlety. You're not a master of much of anything. (laughs) Actually, a murder. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I think I, I think it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mono didn't didn't dislike Kirigiri. She was nice enough when she wanted to be, and he and he respected her skills. He simply didn't know how to read her. Not that he was a champion at reading people in general. Are you good at anything, bro? No. <laughs> Except he's not. ride motorcycle and have long hair. <laughs> God. <laughs> but Kirigiri was a special case, and he knew it wasn't just him. Normally, he felt like he was supposed to protect women. With her, he couldn't help but feel unnerved, and also like he, she never needed his help to begin with. 
even like he would be getting in her way if he tried. He didn't know how to feel about that. In all honesty, she somewhat frightened him. She intimidated him. It's probably scared <laughs> of women right now. <laughs> yeah. He never admitted that, of course. He would never hear the end of it from his gang. <laughs> Boss is scared of a little girl. They laugh, and he felt his face go red in that mental image alone. After several seconds of silence, Kirigiri flipped her pale hair over her shoulder and rubbed her chin thoughtfully with her gloved hand. Just then, Mondo thought he saw Makoto Nayagi poking his head out of the doorframe and peeking at the two of them, but dismissed it as his imagination. He was probably so accumulate, accustomed to seeing the smaller boy trailing behind her that he probably imagined him where he wasn't. Well, you're clearly doing something, so there's no point in lying, she said bluntly, looking almost offended that he'd tried to fool her with something that simple. It's none of your business, what I'm doing, the gang leader clarified, muttering under his breath. Kiri Kiri narrowed her lavender eyes, and then a small smile formed on her face as she quickly noted the paper in Mondo's hand and saw Kiyotaka leaving a nearby classroom. I believe I've seen all that I need to. I'll talk to you later, she said matter-of-factly. She then disappeared as suddenly as she had appeared. She never entered or exited a room in a normal fashion. She fucking Mondo's just, like, like faded in and out of existence. Yeah, exactly. She's just kind of here, and then she's not. You know that, like, you know that, like, the teleporting meme where the guy does the peace sign and he fades yes. away into the background? That's what she does. <laughs> to fade in and out exactly of a scene. Her. Yeah. <laughs> Mondo took a moment to process what had just happened. He felt like Kirigiri had somehow pieced together what was going on, though that would mean that she had been watching him for some time. The hell does she mean she'll talk to me later? Don't I have any say in that? What's her fucking deal anyway? Oh, right, Taka. The boy in question. So silly. Yeah. <laughs> He's being real silly right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this fucking gangster right now is scared of a little girl. <laughs> I love him. I kid, Mondo's my absolute favorite in the franchise. Yeah, he's, oh, I love him. The boy in question, the object of his affection, had just left his classroom and was a already more than halfway down the hall. The day's classes were over and done with, so it was likely that Kiyotaka was heading back to his dorm to change out of his uniform before, well, studying. The same thing he did every day after school, as if he'd had any other plans. It broke his heart a bit that Kiyotaka didn't look around to find him as he had done before on a few weeks prior. Taka, hang on a second. Kiyotaka froze and looked at the biker with wide, startled eyes. Mano caught up to him in, in several long strides. His longer legs gave him an, an advantage here. Before the hall manager could respond, Mondo, Mondo yanked his hand open and shoved yet another com completely identified note into his palm. Actually, it wasn't quite identical. He used, he'd used he his last class to make a much nicer note on prettier paper, seeing as the previous one had been crumpled. It was incredibly superficial and dorky, yes, but he felt like it, it increased his chances somehow. <laughs> God. <clears throat> Just read it, okay? And, and get back to me later. Mondo turned on his heel and sprinted away yet again. Kyoto, I know running in the halls. I do not wish to have to write you up. Kiyotaka saw Mondo slow to an awkward speed walk before he disappeared into his dorm. Mondo's only comfort was that the prefect couldn't see the redness of his face. I love oh it. Oh my god. Mondo part three. <laughs> Mondo part three. There's, okay, there's four Mondos, three Kiyotakas. And then it looks like there's a couple of them, like, with the shared point of view? Okay. Okay. Alright, this is, this is getting interesting. <laughs> yes. Do you want me to do this one? Nah, I can, I can start. Hold on. Okay. <clears throat> Mondo slid down his dorm room door, the one that had leaned upon as soon as he got it closed, and sat on the floor with his hands on his face and his legs folded. 
He let out a long groan, mostly of annoyance that, at himself for picking such a cheap way to confess his feelings. Taka deserved better, he thought. And then it occurred to him of what a train of thought really meant. Even if Kiyotaka accepted his feelings, what would he expect to come from that? Kiyotaka Ishimaru planned to become Prime Minister someday. <laughs> I forgot that was a plot line. I forgot that was his dream. I also forgot this. <laughs> <laughs> horrible. <laughs> and there was no doubt in Mondo's mind that he could and would do that. Where would that leave him? What good would that possibly come from Kiyotaka out of dating the ultimate fight gang leader? Taka, de Taka deserves so much better. Better than me. Damn. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Mon Damn, Mon that sucks. Speaks. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, moving on. <laughs> Mondo glumly stood and changed out of his uniform into his usual ensemble. He tugged his crazy diamonds jacket on somewhat sadly, and for the first time it felt strangely heavy, like a weight tugging him down. He caught a glimpse of his own face in the wall-length mirror, sharp violet eyes framed in thick liner, and a giant pompadour dyed a different color than the rest of his natural hair. He grimaced, trying to imagine such a person beside Kiyotaka as he delivered his first speech as Prime Minister. Jesus, it was impossible to picture. This is sad. I mean, I do that I a lot, too. I did not expect too. that from this. I mean, I still do that when, I, when I'm when i dating my boy. I'm like, damn, maybe he does deserve so much better than the fucking weirdo like I <laughs> Ugh, Same, man. But yeah, hey, but that's just anxiety. <laughs> Yeah, mental illness. <laughs> Just as Mondo wondered if he could somehow steal the note from Kiyotaka without him reading it, he heard a light rapping at his door. He stopped. He stomped to it angrily. He knew instantly that the knock was not his Kyodai's. The prefect always rapped the door loudly exactly three times. Sheldon Core. <laughs> oh yeah, I just thought of that. Where like Sheldon's like Amy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zach, by that's him. Mondo? Mondo? <laughs> I can see him doing that! <laughs> it's funny. Oh god, that's so funny! Dude, oh it, would, it would not surprise me if Ishimondo was, like, on the like the autism spectrum of some oh, kind. absolutely. He has to be. Without a doubt. <laughs> what? Mondo shouted as he threw the door open. He blinked in surprise. Standing at, standing at his door, acting like it was completely natural, was Makoto Naegi, Ishi, Yasuhiro Hagakure, and Leon Kawada was just behind him. Leon had a hand thrust suspiciously in his pocket, and he looked almost like he was waiting for some kind of signal. Hagakure looked as dazed and distant as ever. Seriously, what does this guy smoke? <laughs> God. I, dude, he's gotta be like a. He probably has. It's it's probably weed. It's probably weed. I mean, it's gotta be. Yeah. Nagi sported his typical friendly smile, but this one seemed almost forceful in some kind of. in the absolute kindness it portrayed. Hey, Owada. We were wondering if you could. if we could chat for a while. Nagi said casually. Mondo leaned against the door frame and folded his arms. And since when do you three since when do the three of you pop up in my dorm for a chat? Well, we're friends, aren't we? We feel like we haven't spent much time together lately, Hagakuri supplied. He's stroking his chin stubble as he has his with his thumb and flashed a wide grin. Mondo supposed that he considered the trio his friends, but they weren't exactly buddy-buddy in the way that he and Kiyotaka were. He guessed that his own forceful nature was mostly to blame. Chihiro was by his side more often than these three guys were. That said, he respected Naegi and always had a blast with Leon and Hagakure. He sighed and stepped out of the doorway, allowing the three other boys to squeeze by him. Leon immediately flopped down on his bed without asking for invitation, though he had removed his phone from his pocket and kept it tightly gripped in his hand. Hagakure set about studying the room, and at the moment he was closely studying the motorcycle calendar above his nightstand. Naegi stood politely at the foot of the bed, eyes fixed on Mondo. 
Mondo moved to the corner of the room and dragged out several beanbag chairs, pulling them into position around the low round table all of the dorm rooms came equipped with. He sat down and tapped the chair beside him. Naegi gave a grateful nod before taking a seat himself. So, what do you want to talk about? Mondo asked, and Naegi was just about to jump out of his skin. He looked over at Leon, who was now sitting at the end of the bed and facing them, and the redhead nodded and and tugged his goatee. Look, Mondo, we just wanted to be honest with you. God damn it. (laughs) Why can't they use the first names? Uh, Kyoko. Kyoko. Shen tipped this off. Mondo sniffed. And what exactly did she say to you? Leon started to giggle and try to cover his mouth. Hagakure slightly shaked his slightly shaking his shoulders be- betrayed that he was doing the same thing, even if he wasn't facing Mondo. You got it bad, man. Leon choked through his bad. laughter. <laughs> Leon felt like his cheeks were beginning to to redden. Got what? Mondo knew exactly what he meant. It's hard not to. Yeah, you're you're kind of obvious about it, man. Mm-hmm. We know what's in that note you uh, handed off earlier. Kyoko Chen figured it out. She said that just about anyone could have, though. Nayagi yeah. explained. <laughs> Mondo slapped his hand against his own face in the vain attempt to hide his redness. Well, yeah. what what business is that of yours? I got everything under control. Oh, do you? I mean, really? A note? This ain't middle school? <laughs> God. Leon taunted. Mondo picked up one of his notebooks and threw it at him, and the baseball player easily dodged it. Hagakure... Yeah, Hagakure finally turned around and, and slapped his hands together. Despite what Kawadachi may say, we, we didn't come here to make fun of you. The opposite, really. We're here to help. The fortune teller took a seat in one of the plush chairs and placed his crystal ball on the table. Mondo quirked an eyebrow at him. Help me? Why? Why? Because you two are, like, meant to be, man. So, so, <laughs> right here. The Hagakure gestured vaguely at the crystal ball. Mondo glanced at it. He didn't see anything. And also because it's been killing you for a while. We can all tell, dude. You keep avoiding everybody, and you're no fun that way, Leon added. He was just now sliding off the bed to join everyone else at the table. Mondo sighed and leaned forward over the table to hold his head in his hands. He hadn't been avoiding everybody, just Kiyotaka. Which sometimes meant avoiding whoever else happened to be with him. Look, I kind of just realized that how I feel doesn't really matter. Taka, he's going places, you know? He doesn't need me holding him back. I'm a good-for-nothing thug. I'm not going anywhere. Nowhere good, anyway. At that, all three of Mondo's guests scuffed and talked over one another so loudly that he couldn't understand any of them. He shouted over them to talk one at a time. After looking at one another in the group, apparently deciding to let Nayagi do the talking. Mondo... Literally nothing you said is true. <laughs> You're not holding him back. <laughs> You're so full of shit right now. <laughs> he's a hundred times better than he's with you. Oh yeah? How? I get Curry interjected before the Luxor could continue. Dude, Ishimaru is way more laid back thanks to you. Before you guys were such good friends, he was so super uptight all the time. He didn't know how to joke around or have fun because he was too busy studying, bossing everyone else around. But now he's... He's... Help me out, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Nike took the opportunity to take charge of the conversation again. This is why you should let Nike do the talking, Leon whispered. Mondo chuckled after hearing this. For that, his ignorance and bragging, a certain snoot rich boy was also surprisingly fond of letting Nayagi explain things for him. You mean Biakia? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we gotta add that to the wheel. I'm fucking Makoto X. Yes. <laughs> you, um, you su- give him support that, that I think he really needed, you know? The confidence to try to make friends. 
He's more comfortable being himself, and we can all see how kind and, s and how smart and how strong he is now. He's more than just a loud hall monitor. <laughs> God. Nayagi's eyes bored right into Mondo's as he spoke. Mondo folded into himself somewhat, his face growing redder by the second. The smallest of the gathered young men took the silence as permission to elaborate. And, um, you... you have to realize how much happier he is, right? He used to have that scowl all the time, and now it's almost like he can't stop smiling. Hell, he looks better now that you can actually see the space between his eyebrows, <laughs> Leon added. Haga, Curry, and Nayagi both shot him glares. I happen to like those caterpillars, thank you very much, Mondo muttered. That's weird. Yeah. Alright, you need to tone this down, bro. <laughs> no, yeah, that's weird. That's odd. Even Leon agrees. Just going, <laughs> Jesus, that's real bad. <laughs> yeah, come on. That's funny as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you call oh, them caterpillars? <laughs> that's, uh, he needs therapy. Yeah. You need counseling, mad bad, dude. Yeah, man. Jesus Christ. Jesus, it really is bad, Leon reiterated his earlier point and rolled his eyes. <laughs> Hey, they sued his face, Hagakuri argued. Mondo nodded at him, and the fortune teller flashed him a thumbs up and yet another grin. Nayagi laughed. I, l I love Hagakuri. Yeah, he's, he's just, so funny. <laughs> he's just silly. It's See, you already is. <laughs> he's just silly. <laughs> See, you're already at that point where you like all the things about him that other people would consider flaws. That's how you know there's no turning back, Leon added. Everyone raised their eyebrows at him, and Leon threw up his hands. What? I can't be deep? I was just joking around about his eyebrows. Okay, so let's say uh, Taka's been happier lately. That still ha doesn't change the fact that I'm no good for him. I'm a goddamn gang leader, for Christ's sakes. Oh my god, Mondo. Have you seriously n not noticed... Leon thrusted his arms so quickly that he dropped his phone on the table with an awkward thud before scurrying to pick it back up. Notice what? You've been- you've been pretty well behaved lately. I mean, for you anyway. Not to be rude or anything. <laughs> Nagi <laughs> grinned sheepishly, and Mondo waved a casual hand at him. He had punched Nagi- Nagi in the face not- not long after their first meeting. Not exactly the best first impression. You haven't even punched anyone in, like, months, I think. Not even in school, anyway. Hagakuri explained. Mondo glared at him. It's not like I went around fucking punching everyone in sight. Well, no, of course not. I just think Hagakuri is trying to say is that your temper is greatly improved. A few people have really been pushing your buttons lately, and you've been the bigger person on more than a few occasions. And if... You were the same guy you were a year ago. You would have started a fight by now, said Na Nayagi. What's your point? My point is, like it or not, the two of you compliment one another. Ishim Ishimaru isn't afraid of you, and he, is he has high expectations of you. You can't push him around because he is just as stubborn as you, and he won't tolerate that from you or anyone else. I'm guessing that no one else has ever tried treated you that way. But Ishimaru accepts you and sees you for who you really are, and you're the same for him. You saw through his socially awkward exterior and saw what a great guy he is. That is so nice. <laughs> I, I just love that Mondo needs a pep talk. <laughs> yeah, he, he just needs support. Yeah. He'll be okay. Everyone fell silent and stared at Nayagi, who had gotten uncharacteristically loud and wound up. His face flushed, and he avoided everyone's gazes in favor of looking down to study his own hands. Uh, um, I normally don't catch on to that sort of thing easily, but Kyoko-chan pointed it all out to me, and ever since then, well, it just makes sense, you know, the two of you. I know you w would both be really happy, and that's what we all want for you. You're both wonderful friends to have. No, 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 sorry, I gotta yawn. <laughs> no, okay. Leon and Hagakure loudly voiced their agreement, the latter patting Nayagi on the back. How long has Kirigiri been studying us, anyway? Mondo finally asked. At least three or four months. I'm not sure exactly. Well, shit. I didn't know she was so nosy. You'd be surprised. 
There was a long silence during which Mondo stopped trying to hide the redness in his face. He figured there was, wasn't any point in it by now. His face probably matched Leon's hair and shade. That was when something else dawned on the biker. Um, you guys still overlooked a small detail. Taka's a dude. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know, a guy. Guys don't normally like other guys. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> guys don't... Wait. Oh yeah, okay. Guys don't usually like other guys. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Neon you know, corrected. Mondo scoffed at him. Okay, I know that. I'm just saying that even if we can make a good couple or whatever, we still don't know what if he likes men, and somehow I feel like he won't... He wouldn't with how traditional he is about everything. Oh, Ishimaru is totally gay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I love how Hagakure said that line. <laughs> That's... That's delightful. Everyone turned to face Hagakure, who looked, who looked as out of it as ever, like he didn't even realize what he just said. The hell did you just say, Hagakure? Mondo demanded. I said Ishimaru was gay. I heard you, but how did you get that idea? I think you would have told me or some, told me something like that. The girls told me, or well, I overheard them talking about it, and then they had to explain it to me, and no one. And tell me not to tell anyone. <laughs> Who? <God. laughs> what a good secret teller. <laughs> Don't... Yeah. This is like when something happens at work and they say not to tell anyone and I go over to Cameron and I'm like, Cameron, Cameron, I gotta tell you the secret. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Hina, uh, Sakura, Kirigiri, Chihiro, Maizono... Why does Chihiro get a chi? Nayagi asked somewhat absently. Duh, her name starts with chi. That's... That's <laughs> God, I love Kakura. He's so I'm me. Sick. He's got two I brain cells and they're so both much. smoking weed. Um, sorry. No, call everyone else by their last names. The fuck kind of logic is that? Mondo roared, cutting off Nayagi. Dude, it's Hakakure. Just let it go, Leon whined. Anyway, why are they all saying he's gay? Beats me. They all said he can. J they can just tell. It's apparently a girl thing that I wouldn't understand. Hakakure said with a shrug. Well, well, if Kirigiri thinks so, then maybe Mondo began before trailing off and then shaking his head. No, no, there's no way. He would have told me. Well, well, maybe he is not entirely aware of it. You know that stuff can get pretty complicated, especially at our age, Nayagi suggested. Mondo hummed deeply at that, his eyes focused on the ceiling fan above him as he thought. Leon interrupted everyone's thoughts by slamming his hands down on the table. So are we doing this or what? Everyone looked to Mondo, who eventually shrugged and looked down. I already gave him the note. Not like I have much choice now. The other boys clapped and cheered, and Nayagi offered his... Um, his friend a supportive pat on the back. Leon, however, stood and finally pressed the dial button on the screen of his phone. He'd apparently had a number waiting throughout the entire conversation. Wait, who the fuck are you calling? <laughs> Leon held up a finger to silence him before Whisper yelling his response. Look, if you're gonna win over Ishimaru, you need to prove that you're a changed man, and that starts with your look. That hair isn't doing you any favors, man. Oh, I don't like this. You don't like his corn hair? <laughs> no, I love his corn hair. I don't like that they're going to change him. Yeah, <laughs> I love his corn hair. <laughs> <laughs> I I do like the art that I find sometimes of Mondo, and he has his hair down. It looks so cool. It is. Yeah, I nice. like it. I wonder how much fucking hairspray he uses <laughs> to get it. Three bottles a day. <laughs> Mondo ref ref. God damn it! Reflexively. <laughs> reached up to touch his oh yeah his hair on on any other day and under any other circumstances he would have been irrationally defensive about it he'd never admit out loud that the main reason for this was the fact that his brother has always supported the same hairstyle 
He thought that maybe it was time to move on, to start letting go of such, of some of his ghosts. A year ago, he couldn't have done that. He couldn't have even dreamed of it. But after all the time that it spent with Tiatak and the others, time during that, which he had admitted to his own... God damn it. I can't... Can you... To his bro, his eyes full of tears. <laughs> what had really happened to Dia... He had, he had become truly stronger, strong enough to change. He lowered his hands from his hair and re- relented with a sigh. Okay, he said quietly. While we're at it, someone ought to cut Hagakuri's hair. He did not say. <laughs> Man, I, I don't remember shit about Daya other than, like, he died so Mondo wouldn't die from a fucking truck. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I don't know anything else about that character. There's not a lot explained. He's just, uh, Mondo's older brother and he died. <laughs> he was plot. <laughs> yeah, he he really was just character development. Not even good character development because the boy died after that was revealed. <laughs> yep. Alright, um... So... I wonder what fucking hairstyle they're gonna give him. It better be something cool or else I'm gonna be mad. <laughs> Alright, I think we have time for one more chapter. So we'll finish up Mondo's point of view. Let's see where okay. this shit goes. Gotcha. Alright. Mondo, part four. Finally, at the Let's end go. of this fucking thing. <laughs> at least Mondo's point of view. Yeah. Mon- Mondo had never felt such a pain as he did as a certain pop star's metal brush tore through every knot in his hair. I bet melodramatic, yes, but something something about the tugging of his scalp was ex- excruciating. Over the years of styling that it the way he did, his hair had become heavily damaged by dyes, sprays, and gels. It wasn't an easy style to maintain, but he was now paying the hefty price. It had been decided that a portion of it was so damaged it had to be cut off entirely. Uh, I better, I hope there's no, like, matting in there, because matting like, it's real bad. Shit, could you be any rougher? (laughs) He wince. Yeah. Know how many, like, TikToks I see of, like, hairstylists, like, doing their job, and then some, like, mom brings in their kid and just like, oh, her hair's a little bit tangled, and it's, like, serious matting. Oh... And I'm like, how the fuck do you not notice this about your child, dude? Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah. Aga Curry had him pinned in the chair. He had his arms wrapped around Mondo and clenched him in the front of his chest to keep him from thrashing about. Leon and Nayagi each sat on one of his legs to keep him from kicking. Behind <laughs> the group, a small girl observed them with her phone held out in front of her, taking the occasional progress pictures. Who the fuck is the girl? I don't know. Like, I know uh, Sakura's doing... No, not Sakura. Maizuno. She's doing Mm -hmm. her, like, his hair. And then they're fucking strapping him down. But who the fuck is taking photos? Is it it, uh, Chihiro? Oh, maybe... It's all going to be worth in the end, I promise. My Zoan-san is going to show you how to do a few different styles, too. And once she's done fixing the hair itself, the tiny girl said. The idol in question smiled at that, pausing uh, her torturous movements for a moment to take a step back and admire her handiwork. The pompadour had been raked out, and she was now in the process of correcting and relaxing Mondo's curls and removing the many thick knots. You're just lucky the damage is still fixable, Owatakun. You really- you should really take better care of your hair. It's gotten terribly dry and you have split ends everywhere. It was difficult to hear something like that from Sayaka Mizono. Her hair was soft and shiny, and her skin was like porcelain. Even someone like Mondo could see that she took good care of herself. I'm surprised Taka has never scolded you about it, the smaller girl added. Mondo snorted. Kiyotaka was rather uptight about hygiene. His hair may have looked spiky, but it was incredibly soft to the touch and impeccably clean. That's just because I never let him touch it. He'd just about die if he knew. Say, Chi, do you, do you think that he likes me? I mean, you know... 
I know what you mean, the girl interrupted. Chihiro Fugusaki was often the third person in a trio that included both Mondo and Kiyotaka. She did the, perf- the prefect better than anyone else in the room, with the exception of Mondo, of course. And yes, I do believe that he does. Really? Really? Now sit still. My Zona-san is still isn't finished. My Zona slattered a, some kind of lotion in her hands and then stuck them in Mondo's hair, which at the point was sticking out in every direction possible. She applied the mixture everywhere and then started spraying his hair with the water bottle. Hey, if we're talking fashion, why don't we ask... Oh, Ju- oh, Inoshima, Mondo mm. asked, obvious, obliviously. Everyone else in the room only shuddered at the thought. Because I want to get a date with Taka, not with a f- <laughs> not with fucking death. <laughs> Mondo God. grumbled vaguely. Leon sighed, realizing he wasn't going to get an answer out of anyone. My Zona tore through the last of the knots in Mondo's hair, which had been softened by the combination of the product and the water. He now had a damp, multicolored mop of curls atop his head that fell past his eyes in front and well down his back. Mondo thanked the stars that Shihiro had thought to remove his jacket first, or it would have been covered in stray hairs and water by now. My Zona wet the hair thoroughly and then pulled down the ends. She stuck her tongue out a bit as she studied, closely studied the damage. I think I can work with this. I'm going to start to cut it, okay? You'll look better when I'm finished, I promise. You have nice wavy hair, you know. Mondo only grunted in response, and then he felt the first snip of the scissors right above the bridge of his nose. Baizono got to work quickly as she seemed to have something in mind already. Behind her, Chihiro plugged in a razor and a hairdryer. I better not end up looking like some dork. I want to get cleaned up a bit, but don't give me a bowl cut or anything. I kind of want to see Mondo with the fucking bowl cut now. <laughs> I don't. I'll pass. <laughs> My Zuo laughed. No, of course not. You'll still be able to pull off the biker look. It's just a bit more grown up. You should... You got a really handsome face, but your look is always distracted from that. Uh, thanks, I guess. <laughs> oh, did you hear that, Uwada? My Zuo thinks you're pretty. Fuck off, Leon. Mondo <laughs> kicks his foot slightly enough to jostle the redhead sitting on it. Sit still, Chihiro warned. As shy as she was around people, she she would have would be very stern when she wanted to be. Mondo probably needed that. Between her and Kiyotaka, he really had cleaned up his act. It was almost pitiful how little fear they held on him, how casually they would push his buttons and boss him around. Even more pitifully was how little he did about it. There were several minutes of silence, the room filled with only sounds of Mizoto's scissors working through Mondo's hair. So, how long have you liked boys? <laughs> she asked suddenly. Mondo nearly choked on his own breath by that. He felt Hagakuri chuckling against his back as he shoved him off his shoulder. I don't know if I like boys or not. I just I just like Taka. That's all. <laughs> Zona hummed in understanding. Her face is a bit pink. Well, answer me this. Of all these, those girls you asked out to get... And, oh, hold on. <laughs> of all those girls you asked out to get to your current losing streak, do you really like any of them? Did you even remember what they look like? Mondo fell silent once more, his gaze fixed firmly on the razors on the razor behind his her dresser. Wait, does everyone know about my goddamn losing streak? Damn, that Aww. sucks ass. If everyone knows that you fuck it you like have zero riz. That's <laughs> sad. Uh um once he had recovered from his embarrassment, he realized that he couldn't even name a single one of the girls. <laughs> See, that's what I thought. You just wanted a girlfriend because you're supposed to have one. The girl didn't really matter. Mondo was stunned. Maizono had somehow figured out something that even he hadn't been aware of. It was true. Daya had always had a beautiful woman by his side, one that rode on the back of his motorcycle with him. Mondo had often been teased about the fact that he had no such biker's bride. After that, he'd gotten desperate to find one, but had managed to scare them all away with his habit of nervous yelling. He'd never stopped to consider that maybe he had never liked girls in the first place. How, how did you do that? I'm psychic. 
I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I just have really good intuition. Everyone else chuckled at what was apparently some kind of inside joke. Nayagi explained that Mizono had tricked him the same way on many different occasions, and Mondo groaned. I can't believe I fell for that. And this intuition of yours says that Taka's gay? Huck Curry said so. It's a weird way to end it. <laughs> yeah. I, I love the fucking reference to the I'm psychic thing. Mm-hmm. In, oh, wait, oh, okay, here it is. It most certainly does, and trust me, I'm never wrong about these things. I can't believe you, you actually- I can't believe you haven't picked it up yet, Chihiro teased. She was now all but infatuated- infixed with- God damn it! <laughs> Why do I suck at reading? <laughs> Wait, hold on. She was now. I thought... <laughs> Sorry, I thought that that was where the chapter ended because my uh, computer didn't load the rest <laughs> of the chapter, and it said continue to next part. Oh, okay. I was so like, I was... okay. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry, yeah, my something happened. You're good. You're good. I I'm gonna reread this fucking paragraph. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I can't believe you haven't picked up on it, Jihiro Tease. She was now. Now all but, in fact, to my Zono's side, watching as Mondo's hair was removed in chunks. Well, I kind of thought that maybe he was once or twice, but I, I figured that it was kind of wishful thinking, you know? Like, I was trying to make myself feel better. The other boys hummed knowingly, and Leon patted his knee assuringly. Chihiro made a sympathetic sort of awe sound. Before long, my Zono had finished cutting off Mondo's damaged hair and shaping it into something resembling a hairstyle. She took a razor to the back and the sides and then and then dried the remaining mop of the blondish brown hair, fluffing it with her hands as she did so. What he was left with was something of a puffy mohawk. The boy seated on his feet and wrapped around his chest stepped back to admire Mizono's handiwork. Okay, I'll explain what we have here. With this cell, you have plenty of volume on top which is kind of edgy. If you want to, you can leave the bangs on your face, but if you can also do this. With her last words, my Zono ran a, a gel-covered hand through his messy bangs and flicked them to the back. She then messed with them a bit, leaving a few unintended rent strands hanging down a bit on his forehead. Bondo learned a collective bunch of oohs and ahs. Dude, I you know what I just saw on my fucking for you page was some girl like going as like men grow up, they have this hairstyle that as described as like the the Pidgeotto, where it's like all top and then like s like sideburns. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh my god. She's like, look, I'm gonna like here's what Pidgeotto looks like, and look here's here's grown men haircuts in like 2022. Look at that Pidgeotto yeah. hair, Pidgeotto. <laughs> Exactly. And I'm yeah. like, oh my god, my boy has the fucking Pidgeotto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he has like a big ass beard and everything, like bit sideburns, and then like all poof at the top. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you look at that? Sexy. I'll fucking kill you, Leo. <laughs> it's really nice, though, Nayi said. Chihiro nodded her head and in furious agreement. That should do- you should do uh, Hagakure's next, Leon muttered. Hey, what's wrong with my hair? Hagakure stuck both of his hands in his messy- mess of dread- of a dreads as if protesting them from Leon's gaze. Okay. Oh, I almost forgot, Mizona chimed, and she took a small swipe and ran it across Mondo's eyes. The liner came up easily, and he blinked at her. For some reason, she looked confused. What? You're- you're not wearing mascara? Why would I be wearing mascara? The other boys let out varying sounds of shock. Dude, you have some freakishly long eyelashes, Haga Curry finally exclaimed. Sh shut up, it runs my family. Or at least, Diaz had been similar. It's not like he had ever really known his parents or anyone else in his family. Mondo shook the thought from his head, and turned to find that Mizono and Chihiro were now rummaging through his dresser drawers and tossing clothes aside as they ruled them out. Chihiro found a pair of straight-legged, dark-washed jeans, and Mizono settled on a fitted gray t-shirt with a 
sloping v-neck, and a normal, not gang-related leather jacket. <laughs> he can still wear the boots, right? Chihiro wondered aloud. Yeah, they'll match with the jacket. The belt is fine, too. It's a nice personal touch. Wando folded his arms and glared at them. When did I turn into a fucking Barbie doll? <laughs> Despite his protests, Mondo was forced into the bathroom, where he changed his clothes. As he changed, my Zono rattled off information about his new hairstyle at him through the door, telling him how to dry it in the mornings and how to tie it back. When he finished changing and looked over his reflection in the wall-length mirror, he had to admit that he was impressed. He felt confident, but more importantly, he looked mildly presentable, like someone who deserved Kiyotaka's affections. Damn, bro. I, I, okay, I don't know why, but I'm gonna call it now that, like, Kiyotaka's gonna appreciate it, and he's like, no, but I really love you for you, and then they're gonna, like... I hope that he does that, because I really hate the trope of, like, doing a makeover so someone will like you. Yeah, take off his glasses, let his hair down, and now he's hot. Yeah, I hate that shit. I turned to see Maizono and Shihiro beaming up at him proudly, and he sighed, wrapping the two of them into a hug with his muscular arms. Thanks, guys, he whispered. The girls giggled, the sound of muffled by his broad chest. And then he thought he heard another voice, and he looked at the door to find that Nagi had opened it and in the doorway he was talking to Kirigiri. She had appeared as silent and suddenly as ever. It seemed that the two exchanged quick whispers. When, he, when she noticed Mondo staring, Kirigiri stood tall and locked eyes with him. Nayagi immediately panicked and pushed her out, slamming the door in her face. Dude, that was mean. <laughs> what was that about? Mondo asked, directing the atten the question to Nayagi. Um, it was nothing. So, um, did do you have a plan to where to meet uh, Ishimondo to discuss the note? Mondo had half a mind to push the subject of the purple clawed detective further, but he found himself distracted by Nayagi's question. He actually never thought about that. I was um. I was just going to stop by his dorm room, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd voiced its disagreements, and then Nagi took Mondo by the arm, winking at Chihiro. Before Mondo could say anything to her, Chihiro fled the room. Now that he t took a moment to think about it, he hadn't actually seen Chihiro come in. He, She hasn't been with Maizono. She just appeared suddenly a little after. A little after my Zoda had started trying to untangle his hair. She has the teleport power of <laughs> just appearing. Good for her, yeah. <laughs> and now she disappeared as suddenly as she appeared, resembling reminiscing of Chiri Kirigiri. Before he could voice this concern, my Zoda too suddenly ducked out, leaving him alone with the boys once again. What the fuck is going on with Oh, I have a great idea. Come with us, Mondo. Uh, Nayagi tucked on, tugged on Mondo's arm and the baker relented, allowing the trio to tug him along to a destination that everyone but him apparently knew. Oh, okay, we get the, the photo. Okay, that's what it looks like, I guess. Oh. I like it. <laughs> Yay! I, I do really like this hair. I gotta be real. All right. If we ever cosplay Mondo, we can do this hairstyle. I feel like it would be nice. True. Yeah. Fluffy mohawk. I used to have that hairstyle. Did you really? Yeah, I did. Dude, I don't think I've ever seen you without the hat on, so I don't know what your full hair looks like. Yeah, it's it's nothing exciting. <laughs> I I need to get it trimmed really bad. Mine too. Mine's getting long. Mm. All right. Uh, yay. What do you what what do you think? Uh I this is good. This is good. This is one of my favorites of what we've read, I think. No, that's saying a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many different things have we read that were like utter garbage? Oh god. Um a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the harpy one. I like how that oh was the God. first introduction you've had to the fucking Wattbed book club was reading that. <laughs> I think that's true, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, that is Harvey so gets fucking... Yeah, yeah. Harvey gets... yeah. We still quote that at work where we're like, we, we yeah. would, whenever you look down, I'm like, dude, did someone like mug you and throw you behind a bush? <laughs> <laughs> Which happens often. <laughs> <laughs> the 
does someone break your glasses and break your bones and throw you behind a bush? Does someone leave you on the ground? <laughs> did someone beat you mercifully and then go into a bar with your- Oh yeah, did you get mugged? <laughs> All right. Oh if if God. you would like to read this book, I will have a link down below. The author seems to have a lot of different books as well. So if I they like Voltron a lot. So <laughs> if, if you're into Voltron, go, go read that shit. We should probably yeah, read Voltron. Hmm? Would you want to read Voltron sometime? I know it's a cursed fandom, but <laughs> uh, I don't know anything about it. You never watched it. No, um, that you're was lucky. a conscious decision that I made for <laughs> self-preservation. You're fucking lucky, man. <laughs> yeah, I I like saw like the fandom doing what they do, and I was like, "Yep, I'm never touching that." <laughs> man, you lucky bastard! I yeah, should have been like that. I, I've got out scot free with a lot of fandoms, and I'm very very thankful for that. What about the Italia fandom? Nope. No, oh. <laughs> unfortunate. I mean, yeah, I like I I watched like some of it with my sister, but that's different. I never watched the show fully. I never got into the fandom, um. So dodged a bullet with that one also. Damn, you are you are just dodging bullets, but unfortunately you went to Homestuck. Yeah. So. No, yeah, okay. See, Homestuck <laughs> happened because I had COVID and I was stuck in my partner's room for like a week and a half. And I was like, what do I do with my time? I'm gonna go crazy. So I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> what a logical person would do, yes. <laughs> yeah, because a friend of mine who likes it started rereading it. So I was like, oh, it'd be fun if we both read it. And also I have COVID and I'm doing nothing. So... <laughs> Oh Aww. yeah, it's time for everyone's favorite game, Fan oh, Fiction yeah. Roulette! Oh forgot. yeah, yeah, me too, honestly. I was about to end it, I'm like, wait a minute, we don't know what we're gonna read yet. We gotta spin! Alright, I was playing around with it while I was waiting, so that doesn't mm -hmm. count. <laughs> Sorry. Alright, yeah, right. as long as it's not a repeat, we're gonna read whatever's next, alright? Okay. okay. Alright, spin the wheel. Let's go! There's so much on here. I know. A lot of we options. so much to get through. Okay. Okay! Okay. The right, Hasman sure. Hotel Universe. <laughs> Alright. I've actually seen that. Oh, finally! <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Sorry. I'm stupid. Sorry. I meant, I've seen Hell of a Boss. I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like, stupid, oh my god, but, finally! Uh, you watched it! And you did that to me. I can't believe it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I that was a genuine like idiot moment. It's fine. I'm not disappointed or anything. Okay. <laughs> I, I I really appreciate that. <laughs> Alright, well, so I guess uh, next time we'll read the Hasbin Hotel shit. We don't know what cool. it'll be, but Yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. Alright, but this has been the Wattpad Book Club. Join with Coda and me, Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.